This is Jessica with cutesycrafts.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to stitch a monoline font, which just means a single line, and using the stem stitch. This one's a slightly larger font, so I use three strands of floss. And this one here is a smaller font, so I just use two strands of floss with the stem stitch. And I'll be showing you how to do it on this hoop that I'm working on here. Both of these hoops are going to be available on the in the ebook that I'm working on and I will make sure to show you guys that when all of those patterns are finished. To stitch a monoline font I have a small needle on two strands of embroidery floss and I'm going to be using a stem stitch. So bring your needle up through the back of your work. And around these small curves, you need to make sure that you make the stem stitches very short, shorter than you normally would. So I'm going to start with a short stitch there and then bring my needle up halfway between where my needle came up and my needle went down. And then I want my needle to come out here on the left side. Since my curve on my L is coming this way, I'll bring my needle up on the left side of the thread. If it was going the opposite way, I would bring it up on the other side of the thread. After you have that first stitch done, go ahead another stitch length forward. Make sure it's a short stitch since it's a tight curve there. Stop before you pull your thread all the way through. And then I'm bringing my needle up right in the same spot where that first stitch went down in, and I need to make sure that my needle goes off to the left of that thread as well. So just make sure that you keep bringing your needle up on the same side for every stitch. And now that I'm at a straighter part of my letter, I can lengthen my stitches just a little bit more. You don't want to make them too much longer because then it will look uneven. And continue bringing your needle up on the same side that you have been the entire time. Now that I'm getting back to another tight curve, I want to make sure that I start shortening my stitch length again. And then again, when you get to the straighter part, you can start making your stitches longer again. And then right here, normally when I'm doing um, lettering in a different style, I won't do this, but for the stem stitch, you kind of have to keep it going. So I'm gonna actually stitch over this line here. Whenever you get to a top of a point of a letter like this, you're gonna wanna end your stitches and then start them over again. I'm going to go up and I'm going to dot my eye and I can do this without starting a new thread because my thread is lighter than my background fabric. If I was using like a white fabric with a dark colored thread then I might be concerned about the line showing from here to here and I might stop my thread and then start again to do the French knot right here. And normally when you are writing the letter I, you would go up and then come back down, but you don't want to come back down on that same line because you've already stitched right there. So I'm just going to bring my needle down to about the spot where I think that the letters would split and start stitching again.
Just a couple more tips for when you're using a stem stitch for your fonts. Um, you see here on my G, I have this main curve here. And so when I did the stem stitch, I was bringing my thread out that way. But then when I got to this part of the S here, my thread started going into the inside of the curve instead of out like I would want it to. And you don't want to switch the side that your thread is coming out of. Just continue to do it the same way that you did for the eight or for the bottom of the G because otherwise it's gonna mess up the twist on your thread. So just take the, choose whichever side is the main part of your curve here and continue that around and I continued around until I got to a stopping point here. And then if it was necessary, you could then change which side your thread was coming out when you did the next part of the letter here. Also, as always with embroidery, make sure that you keep your work really neat in the back and don't, for instance, start stitching here and then go over here to start stitching and have a big line of thread across the back. If you needed to, set for some reason, travel from here to here without starting a new thread, you would just weave your thread under this path here until you got to the area that you needed to be in. That way you don't have that long piece of thread that could possibly be showing up in the front of your work. And that is how you would stitch any mono line font using the stem stitch. If you're interested in learning how to stitch a font that has thicker and thinner fonts like this one here, I have another video and I will link to that one in my comment section. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to see more videos and head on over to my blog cutesycrafts.com for more free patterns and fun craft ideas.